Hello, this is Ptharian's Flame. Welcome to my third Haskell tutorial. So, in a previous tutorial, um, you learned about some simple numeric operations, how to start GHCI and how to quit it, and some useful preliminary tools. So, let's start up GHCI again. And we will now focus on functions. So, um, in Haskell, uh, functions are pretty much the same thing as variables. They are data. They are higher order capable, um, which means you can pass them around as, as though they were data, as though they were just an ordinary thing. Um, function objects or uh, object-oriented functors may be a familiar concept to you or not. If they are, higher order functions work the same way. Um, it's just that you don't have to declare them an object first. So, um, in order to define a function, let's just define a simple function. Um, it's the same thing as with variables. So you say let a equals 1. You just define a variable a. You say let uh, my func 1 x, y equals x plus two times y, and you say my func one three. Uh, sorry, my func one one three. So um, I've just demonstrated two things. One, actually I've demonstrated the three things. One, this is how you define functions in GHCI. Two, functions are both defined, well, functions are defined the same way as variables, except that they take parameters first. And functions parameters follow the function name with a space, and then just have spaces between them. Uh, it's a very minimal style of function definition and function calling, and it's used all over Haskell. Um, so make sure you get used to that. Secondly, GHCI has noticed that um, this identifier here, my func, wasn't in scope, as in I hadn't declared it. If you're familiar with uh, variable scope, you should be good here. This is a fairly straightforward error. Um, if you're not, go read up on scope. I don't really... I'm not sure if I could explain it properly. Um, it's, a, it's a fairly complex idea. Uh, although, well, I mean, it's a fairly simple idea when, once it gets down to it, but it's... it's I found it hard to learn until it finally just clicked with me. Um, but if you know what if you know what scope is and how it works, then that that should be a fairly straightforward error to interpret. Um, what's cool about GHCI, at least, is that it will tell you, uh, did you mean this? So it's very smart about what you intended to do in many cases. Um, so that's about it for oh no, it's not about it. So. Um, one key thing about Haskell is that operators are just functions too. So if we say 3 plus 4, obviously we've got uh, integer literal 3, integer literal 4, and um, the operator plus there, and it gives us 7. But uh, what happens when we end up with uh, what, well, what, what happens if we want to use plus as a function? We can. We can surround it by parentheses and call it as though it were a normal function, because it is. It is just a normal function. It happens to be a function composed entirely of symbols, which means that by default it gets called infix. Um, you can also call uh, ordinary non-symbolic non functions infix, even though by default they're prefix functions, um, you can, as long as they have two parameters, you can call them infix, like this. Those are backticks. And um, uh, on a QWERTY keyboard, they're immediately left of the one key, uh, in case you don't know where they are. Uh, I'm assuming you can find the backticks now. Um, but surround... It, uh, no spaces here. This is one of the few few cases where spaces are not allowed at all. Um, you can't. You must not have any spaces between the backticks 
and the enclosed identifier. The identifier uh, must be non-symbolic, and if it's a non-symbolic identifier surrounded by backticks, it becomes infix. Likewise, if you surround a symbolic identifier with parentheses, it becomes prefix. Um, one cool thing you can do with both, uh, well, whenever anything is in infix form, is you can uh, do operator sections, and that's the last part of functions here. So an operator section works as follows. So let's say I want to do, do um, actually I should probably introduce lambdas first. So um, a lambda is written like backslash x, y, forward arrow, that's dash greater than sign, um, x plus y. Uh, and, of course, Haskell is going to tell us that it there's an error trying to print the value of a function, because it's a function, and it can't figure out how to print it as though it were data. Uh, even though functions get treated as data, there are just some things that, you know, it's kind of hard to figure out how to print. So, um, so that's, a, that's a fairly common error for beginners. Um, and I'll explain exactly what all of this junk means in a little while. But, um, but for now, just note that it knows that it, it doesn't know how to put it on screen as a, as a value. So um, what you can do is say let f equals equal backslash x, y to x plus y. And now f is a, now f is, is, this is essentially the same as saying let f x y equals x plus, plus y. Um, and it'll get you the exact same result. Um, lambdas are just anonymous closures, and uh, if you're familiar with the concept of anonymous closure, you shouldn't have any problem with that. Um, let, one last thing. To deal with operator sections, let f equal, um, well, let fx equal x plus 7. Well, we can do that, right? But what would be better is if we have let f equal plus 7. What? So, um, we can, if we surround, um, an operator applied on either side, so if we we have minus, this can be minus 7 or 7 minus, and they, they work differently, but it'll just replace the missing parameter with this, this will create a function or a lambda, an anonymous closure, with one argument that will take the missing parameter and apply it in right, right where my cursor is, um, or in this case, right where my cursor is now. Uh, that's it, and we can now use f like that. Uh, never mind. That's that's one pitfall that you have to watch out for. Negative numbers have to be surrounded by parentheses. This minus sign, this minus sign is a uh, overloaded thing. Uh, if you want to do that, say let f equals subtract seven, which is kind of like a workaround. So f six should now give you negative one. All right, um, that's it for now. I will see you next time. Happy Haskelling.